It was spectacular. It was everything I imagined and more. Really? Mm -hmm. What did you imagine it was going to be? Pretty much what it was. <laughs> Guys, welcome to Kim and Larry's Luxury Adventures. We live in Naples, Florida. I own a marketing company. Kim's a fitness instructor. We go on adventures. We film everything. Let it sink in. And then we tell you all the stuff we wish we knew before we went. And only the stuff we feel is worth your time. Two other things you should know. Number one, if you're interested in one chapter over another, our navigation text makes it simple for you to fast forward and find exactly what you're looking for in the video. Number two, we only tell stories we love. Bad adventures will never make this series. Today, cruising Alaska's inside passage on the Silver Seas Muse, five chapters. Things you can't miss, Alaska as a destination, the Silver Seas Muse, chapter four, the most telling part of this episode, the Silver Sea Company, and chapter five, afterthoughts, let's get going. Chapter one, things you just can't miss in no particular order. Can't miss number one was our grand entrance into Alaska on Alaska's Railway. The four hour stunning ride were hundreds of us who were heading from Anchorage to where we would all board our ship in Seward, Alaska. Hey! Wow, listen, listen to this crowd, right? Cheers, guys. It is absolutely beautiful. They serve drinks and wine. They serve food. Amazing. What a great vibe on the train, right? Yeah. All these people who had traveled from wherever, they face you to some strangers. We happen to make our best friends of the week. Hi, Ronnie and Peter. <laughs> so it was just a joy ride. That's about it. the best way to describe it. It's an absolute joy ride. Can't miss number two in Juneau, Alaska, Tracy's Crab Shack. Hey, dude. So all these people are waiting for, for what? Breakfast? Lunch? Well, what? all of it. Crab. Wait for crab. gave us this big bucket of crabs and all, everybody was just so busy and everybody was happy working there. Did you ring that bell for us? Yeah. You guys ordered the bucket. What you got there? All right, we got you guys the bucket. They were absolutely perfect. As many times as I've cooked king crabs, as I've eaten king crabs, it was the best. It was the best crab I've ever had in my entire life. Wouldn't it be fun to go there with a big group of people? Yeah. The way it comes in that big bucket, you'll never forget it. Can't miss number three is whale watching in Juneau, Alaska. Now you're guaranteed to see whales on these excursions, but we happen to catch an unusually special day. This enormous male was breaching. This is unusual in Alaska in summertime because usually males will breach, but in winter, as a mating call, when these exact same whales are in Hawaii for mating season. We saw four whales put on such a show, breaching and flipping, and it was like, Amazing. You cannot go to Alaska without going on a whale watching cruise. Can't miss number four, our first day at sea. They had told us at 2.30 today, we'll be arriving in Hubbard Glacier. Look to the right. Oh, wow. oh, wow. Hubbard is located in Enchantment Bay near Yucatan, Alaska. It's in a beautiful cove. Oh my God. As you're approaching, there may be another cruise ship in the cove. And it seems that one at a time, the ships go into the cove, take a spin, then they leave. Because of the ice in the water, they go very slow to be safe from damaging the ship. While many people observe from common decks, we chose to bundle up on our balcony to watch. They gave you the blankets. I had extra blankets. Put on our hats, bundled up, and just watched the glacier. And you said, boy, wouldn't it be nice to have some chocolate? So I got on the phone, I said, do you have hot chocolate? She said, sure, how many would you like? <laughs> We're gonna get to this more later when we talk about the ship and the company. But here's a perfect example of how Silver Seas thinks of everything. 10 minutes later, they're there, smiling with two pots of piping hot, crazy delicious hot chocolate. That's a moment we'll never forget. When in your life do you sit there and watch a glacier? That's a moment of life. Can't miss number five, the whole town of Juneau, Alaska. This entire town is set up just for your visit. Juneau's beautiful. Uh, the town is quaint, going into little shops, talking to the local people. I find that very interesting. So can I ask you guys a question? Yeah, of course. This afternoon when the ships leave, right, is the town just dead? Kind of, yeah. Is it like, uh, usually, nobody's here? Usually after 10 or 11, there's no one on the streets. It's pretty a, much a ghost town. It's either bustling or dead. Yeah. Yep. With COVID over the last couple of years, these towns have been really quiet. Like they missed tourists. They seemed giddy. Like that woman at the bus. Shut up! 
Come on, you got it. I was really, really pleasantly surprised by the beauty of the town, the little details of the town, like the flowers, the care that they took to make that a beautiful place when the cruise ship was coming. And in Juneau, I had some of the best seafood of my life. First was that king crab over at Tracy's, but also I had an explosive flavor surprise eating the briny bay oysters at the Salty Lady really? Seafood Company. Are they local oysters? They are local. Briny Bay. Hey, thank you. Wow. That's good. Man. Wow. That's the best oyster I had my whole life. Is it? That is some good oyster, baby. <laughs> Okay, canvas number six, the White Pass and Yukon Route Railroad of Skagway. This is a wow. <laughs> you were outside the whole time because you were just amazed by seeing everything, but I was on the inside listening to the history of it. Ooh, what was the history? <laughs> I missed the whole thing. When they built it and how many people died and then during the Great Gold Rush. Oh, you won't believe what's going on out here. Is this crazy? Are you scared? There, that's where we're heading. We're in the most exciting cliffs and terrain that I've ever seen in my life. And rivers and mountains with water coming water down. Water everywhere. And you can smell the pine. It's it's so pungent. It's so cold, but it's so worth it. It's worth every single second. Oh my gosh! You're on the edge of the cliff, and you're listening to the story about when it was built. It was in the late 1800s. You go out on that platform, if that's not your usual terrain, you're blown away. You want to feel alive? Go stand out on that platform. Take in that air, those views, the excitement of that rickety old railroad. It's spectacular. Hey there! Okay, can't miss number seven, the stunningly beautiful town of Ketchikan, Alaska. Old little shops. It was so beautiful. And it had this little river running through it. I was really surprised at the beautiful quaintness of this town. Oh, Creek Street so blew me away. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's an Alaskan village. Of course, it's touristy Alaskan village, but it's spectacular in its design. If you're planning on buying stuff, Ketchikan is a place. Store after store had great stuff, really great prices. I was very surprised. That would be the place to get your gifts. Okay, chapter number two, Alaska as a destination. Look, if you can, you got to do this. And if you could do it on a cruise ship, it's the way to go. It's invigorating. And what's more interesting is it gives you great perspective. And believe it or not, a cruise through Alaska can give you hope. I love Alaska. It is an awesome place to visit, and I think everybody should see it. We're out on the ocean. Our cabin door to the balcony is open and uh, we're snuggled under the blankets and we slept 10 hours. I swear, I felt like they gave me some sort of drug and every night we slept like babies. I feel good, right? Yeah. Oh my God, what a sleep. You think it's the air? I got like so much energy. <laughs> I slept like a baby. Alaska air, what are we gonna do? So that's why it's invigorating. But here's why the perspective and the hope we went for days, days, just seeing mountains pass us by. Water and mountains. It's gonna sound really corny, but this is my inner thoughts. It gave me hope. You go to New York City and you just see your horns honk and smog, but then you go for days and you just see the beauty and the eagles and the whales and the, the pine trees and the mountains and the water and the snow caps. And you're like, man, it's, it's so invigorating. Okay, let's talk about the ship. Chapter three, the Silver Muse. The design, the room, the dining, and the service. This is a beautiful ship. It's a small ship. And once you do a small ship, it's tough to go back to those mega ships because small is so pleasant. Today's mega ships can hold upwards of 7,000 guests. Although this is Silver Sea's largest ship, it holds only 596 passengers. There's something so nice about that. The intimacy, the calm soothing peacefulness. This ship's Italian simplicity was designed to be understated, yet rich in luxury. Elegant, yet so comfortable. I love the coziness of the ship. I love that it wasn't one of these mega ships where I felt like I was at a shopping mall at Christmas time. This was just this 
exclusive luxury feeling and classy, understated, like being on a floating luxury resort. I love it. Let's talk about the room. In this room is where you'll realize how far beyond expectations the Silver Sea Company wants to go. This is the biggest room I've ever seen. I don't even think a regular hotel room is this big. The room was fabulous. You walk in and you have a bath and a shower, so much room in your cabin, and everybody has a balcony. You can request pillows, like I needed a therapeutic pillow, you wanted the fluffy feather pillows. And they supply you with this warm, white, fuzzy robe that you really need in Alaska. The room gave me the feeling of, they've thought of everything, like delicious showers. The pressure was just incredible. The water is coming from Alaska, and you have two different choices, shower heads, two TVs, and everybody gets a pull-out couch, which is crazy. When we walked into the room, I was pretty surprised how big it was. And with the room, you get a butler. We couldn't believe how many times we called that butler. Whatever you need, he tries to take care of it so you can get back to enjoying your trip. Okay, let's talk about dining. This is a high-end cruise line. And food is why many people even go on cruises, so you're already starting out with high expectations. So that's tough for any luxury cruise line. But with those expectations, you're still gonna love this cuisine. For breakfast, we made it simple and relaxing every single morning. The sit-down breakfast was really nice. They knew your name, they knew what you wanted when you got there. Honestly, you're really spoiled. So that was breakfast for us. But for lunch, every single day, that buffet was a home run. There's always just some really great looking stuff. Yeah. I hadn't seen that sort of care in cuisine since we were on our honeymoon. For dinner, there are eight restaurant choices. Before you go, you make reservations where you'd like to be. But any changes you'd like to make, no worries. If they can accommodate you, they will. They accommodated us every time we had to change. And our favorite was the sleeper restaurant, the Asian restaurant Indochine. The flavors were absolutely adventurous. I'm always impressed when I have a flavor that I've never had before. And I'm like, how in the world did they make this? And so we ate there how many times? I think like three times. Three times. With eight restaurants and only seven nights and having to go back to your favorite at least one more time, you won't be able to eat at all these restaurants. Sitting cell with high expectations, we still found excitement and originality in every single meal. Okay, let's talk about the help, the service. If you watch no other part of this video, this is the most important part, especially if you're trying to decide what cruise line or what ship to go on. Listen to this. Good morning. Hello, how are you? <laughs> How'd she know my name? What the Silver Sea Company understands about hospitality is an experience in itself. It's a philosophy, it's a black art, which brings us to chapter four. Very interesting very telling. A good friend of mine always said to me, Larry, don't buy the cruise to Alaska. Buy the company that's taking you on a cruise to Alaska. And we had two situations that happened to us which are extremely telling. The day that we woke up to catch our flight to Alaska, 4 a.m., ready to travel from our home in Naples, Florida, which is on the West Coast, all the way across the state of Florida to catch our flight to Alaska we found out was that our flight was canceled, along with just about every other flight that was gonna take us to Alaska. So we had about 24, 36 hours to get to our ship. We get on our phone to call the airline. The wait time was eight hours before we could speak to somebody. Needless to say, we're a little freaked out. Kim gets on her computer, I get on mine. We can't find a flight. Kim remembers that there's an emergency hotline and our flights were included in our package. Maybe they can help us. And after a couple of rings, answers this wonderful smiling voice, a woman named Nikki. We tell Nikki we got 24 hours to get to Alaska. We're in Naples, Florida. She says, okay, let's get busy. And something about her tone, within a couple of minutes, we knew we were gonna be okay. Nikki says, what's the closest airport to you? We said, well, that's Fort Myers. Nikki finds a flight out of Fort Myers for about four times of what our allotted allowance was for our flight on our package, which is something like two, $3,000 per person round trip. And this is after we'd been looking for, I don't know, maybe five, 10 minutes, and Nikki realized, well, this is the only option. She puts us on hold for maybe a minute, and she comes back on, she says, okay, we're gonna book these flights. So in that little tiny minute of time, without hesitation, they quadrupled our budget to get there got us a better flight at a closer airport, actually able to go back to sleep, 
because it was four in the morning and now we didn't even have to catch our flight until two in the afternoon. Nikki was such a pleasure and I hope to goodness Nikki's bosses see this because Nikki, you had no idea we were making this video. You had no idea who we were. Okay, situation number two, just as telling. Same airline, we get there and guess whose luggage doesn't show up? Mine. It's funny because on the way I said to Kim, I put so much effort into that luggage. I feel like it's my time. Because you know that everybody's got a lost luggage story. And sure enough, we got there and there was one guy without luggage and it was me. I had a premonition. What do I do? First of all, I go ask the people in the airline luggage to help me out. And they were absolutely no help. They were just giving me phone numbers to call and ways to track my luggage and, and a bunch of jobs to do. So then I call my travel agent. Same situation. She's given me websites to track and basically a whole bunch of work to do at the very beginning of what's supposed to be the cruise of a lifetime. So I said to myself, I'm not gonna chase down this luggage. I'm just going to wear what I got and buy a couple things and enjoy myself and enjoy Alaska and let it go. So we get onto the cruise ship. I'm walking on my floor to my room and this woman Begonia stops me and she says, excuse me, are you Mr. Kane? Yes, I'm Mr. Kane. She said, I understand that your luggage is lost. I said, how do you know I'm Mr. Kane? She goes, it's my job to know. She said, Mr. Kane, you go enjoy your cruise. We're gonna take care of this. I'm gonna need some numbers from you and some information, but we're gonna track down your luggage. I was like, hello, <laughs> really? That's really nice. Basically what she was saying is, I'm gonna own this problem so you can let it go. That's something the airline wouldn't do. That's something my travel agent who made a truckload of money on this thing would not do. And then Begonia says, I'm gonna give you some credit over at the men's store. Just go buy three outfits that make you comfortable. Also, just put your clothes into the laundry bag. We'll take care of the laundry every day. And that's for both of you. And so they did Kim's clothes too. And then she said, why don't you guys go enjoy some credit at the spa on us? I'm thinking to myself, okay, let me get this straight. You already lost all your profitability on this cruise because of the, this airline and the flight. Now, because the airline loses my luggage, which is at absolutely no fault of your own, you're going to buy me clothes, do my laundry, send me to the spa, and eat more of this problem. This is hospitality like I've never seen. This is a cruise line that throughout, they understand that no matter what the cost, they eat your problem. You deal with zero headaches. Begonia, Nikki, they did not know that we were making this video. In the world of hospitality, Silver Seas sets a standard. We were blown away and we'll travel with Silver Seas again, again, and again. Okay, chapter five, final thoughts. I... <laughs> the time of my life. You did? I loved it. It was the trip of my lifetime. I loved that we went on Silver Seas. I loved it. I came home and I was really surprised at how much I was missing it. And I love to hear how much you were missing it because that means it was a success. I haven't had that travel feeling since we were on our honeymoon. It's such a warm, nice memory. Probably the best message I think I, I could give about this thing is you go online and you see, okay, it's $1,500 a person on this cruise line. Then you see it's $6,000 a person on Silver Sea. Then you add up every single thing that's included and you're probably breaking even, maybe spending a few more bucks, but getting just the trip of a lifetime. It was really a spectacular success. <laughs> of going on this cruise and I enjoyed every moment of it. I really did. And I want to go back.